there's so much good content that's gonna be shown. So I'm really stoked to be able for people to understand what's happening in a Figma designer's Figma file. So it'll be fun. What was the motivation behind this project? So we wanted to think about how could we showcase the value of a pro plan in a way that isn't intrusive or annoying people from their day-to-day -day workflow. So we ran like a, a suite of experiments, um, but this one ended up becoming one of our most successful ones. What, what is that? What is the most successful experiment? Yeah, here, this is like one of the experiments we ran. So if you're running into specific page files, you can see that there's this little nudge that it like a, an actual page popping into a little folder and it's shaking. So we, we were trying to be informative here and getting people to see what's happening, but not have to use so much of their mental capacity to know what's going on. Howdy and welcome to Deep Dive. This is your host, Jay. Today we have Natasha from Figma, who's gonna walk us through an exciting growth design project for FigJam. Right, Natasha? Yes, I'm here and I'm ready. And there's so much good content that's going to be shown in the next couple hours <laughs> or so. So I'm really stoked to be able for people to understand what's happening in a Figma designer's Figma file. So it'll be fun. So when I'm looking at this growth design project, can you just give like a high level overview? What was the motivation behind this project? Uh, so I think the quick TLDR. So I think FigJam was in a really interesting state where I think being Figma's second new product, we really wanted to think about how do we find product market fit for something like a whiteboarding tool. And for a very long time, we actually ended up launching so many new types of features, be it like audio conversations or like music and songs and then like oh, open sessions, all these things. But they ended up being tiered on very different plans. So let's say a pro team might have a little bit more robust tools to facilitate and all that stuff. So I think what we learned is that when we compare a Fig Jam plan to a Figma plan, Fig Jam pro plans are actually pretty affordable with $3, I believe, 3 or $4, depending on where you live. So we wanted to think about how could we showcase the value of a pro plan in a way that isn't intrusive or annoying people from their day-to-day -day workflow. And I think that's always a really delicate sort of problem space to explore. It's like, how do you want to show the value of a paid plan without disrupting the actual free experience? So we ran a couple, like a suite of experiments, um, but this one ended up becoming one of our most successful ones. And I'm happy to jump in and walk you through what the overall experience was and some of the design decisions we made along the way. Oh, wow. I, as soon as you said this is the most successful experiment, what, what is that? What is the most successful experiment? It's the one of the experiments that we ran was just to create a nudge that like a free user might see that kind of like showcases the value of what you get in a pro plan. So this includes things like audio conversations is a big one. Voting is a, another big one because we know a lot of facilitators use it and just like more pages in general. And the way that we did it was instead of just like using a, a typical standard tooltip within our design system that's mainly meant to be more informative or like smaller, less upsell -y related use cases or something that's like just like a banner that spans across your screen, we actually walk through an idea where maybe we can actually think about some bespoke animations and all of that stuff to really like and capture the overall pro plan value, essentially. So what the end result ended up looking, actually, let me just jump into here, because a lot of this is animation related that I had to design in origami. So a lot of, excuse, excuse this being quite slow, a lot of what this ended up looking, let me pull up the inline viewer. Yeah, here, this is like one of the experiments we ran. So if you're running into specific page files, if I can zoom in, maybe I can't zoom in an inline viewer, but yeah. You can see that there's this little nudge that it like a, an actual page popping into a little folder and it's shaking. So we, we were trying to be informative here and getting people to see what's happening, but not have to use so much of their mental capacity to know what's going on. So right here, just I want to dive deeper into this. I'm very new to growth design, so I'm just learning from you as I go. So here the nudge, the way I understand it is that you're trying to nudge the user to say that they only have three files and this is using already one of them. Yeah, and we wanted to think about a visual way to convey that. And we, as a team, brainstormed this idea of, oh, what if it's like a page falling into your actual folder so you know what's happening? I think one thing that's different about SigJam's 
design language overall is that we really lean into obviously like very strong visual metaphors you can obviously see like our toolbar there's a lot of skeuomorphism so trying to tie that into even how we convey the overall value of the paid plan so the question there is when that design when i look at it just wait for you to yeah so here it's like now two of three files used so why did you choose to highlight on how many files are remaining and then i see the pro features get unlimited files voting open sessions and more you're not drawing more attention to that you're drawing more attention towards their usage or capacity this is this continues to be like we hypothesis at the time the main anchor towards why people convert it's that a lot of folks actually end up wanting to use fig jam for a lot of reasons and they're doing like they're either just like creating all in one file or they're creating multiple files and they're running into a paywall that says, oh, you need to upgrade. And they see maybe like Figma's price and Figma's, because you get like a whole different suite of pro design tools, they see like a, a higher price and they're kind of like, oh, you know, I don't want to be upgrading for that much. But if you're just upgrading on the Fig Jam side, it's three, four dollars or so. So we were trying to really anchor on this being like, get like an uninterrupted workflow. Think about potentially seeing the value in a pro plan. And you can also then get unlimited files but one thing we'd also considered which is we had two sort of suite of animations one was really leaning into pages being one of the core anchors of value second suite of value proposition is all your facilitator tools technically and this is what is equivalent to a fig jam pro tool for example voting in open sessions is like a very important one so as you can see here what i one of my maybe like a first or second rev that I did where maybe one of the first tooltip in regards to other feature values is showing voting and open sessions working together. So this is a voting activity conducted by a visitor. So this can be anyone, right? For 24 hours, you can have anyone jump into your big jam file and riff on ideas with you and you don't have to worry about sign up and all that. We tried to play around with some of that metaphor and overall animation there and then dive deep into each one. So for example, you'd also see one for voting individually. And this is just talking about how you could potentially run a voting session with your team, pick your three favorite ideas, and then how we have a different voting stamp wheel. We have your teammates c conveyed through like the face piles here. And I really like this like overall copy around what the life's important questions. Because I think Big Jim in general has always pr been pretty like pithy and, and like uh, casual and, and a little bit more fun and less serious in terms of how we do our tonality. So we were trying to encapsulate that in the overall. Question right here, the size of this banner, if I may call that, it's not too big. It's not too intrusive at all. But did you think about having instead of like the height of this banner be much larger so you could instead show an entire, like a GIF of that entire feature? Like right now you have it in this right corner where it's like small as showing the voting functionality, showing the fly wheel. But did you think about increasing the height of it and maybe expanding that? It's funny that I think in general, as a sentiment internally, we've really tried to move away from using tooltips as an as a surface for like too much information. I think when you choose to utilize a pattern like that, it needs to be as relevant to what the action you're taking is as possible and as concise and especially when we think about workflows and, and in Figma, there is a big principle about not interrupting your workflow because people are spending like eight hours a day on this. You're doing it for work, you're doing it for other things. When it comes to these types of touch points, very crucial to be as lightweight as we can. And we did explore it though. There, let me actually think about here, tool 10. So here were a couple ideas that we considered. One was just something that was like a little bit even more lighter weight. At this point, we were thinking that it maybe wasn't even something you needed to close. There was maybe not even a CTA. We thought that this could potentially just be like an ephemeral indicator that just says, hey, you have one of three free files. That's it. We're going to have this fade away. You can go on with your business. We're not going to block you. Same for the second or third, but we were thinking that maybe on the last one, that's when we're adding like potentially a CTA to say like, it's your last refile. This is a little bit more urgent. You know, you could upgrade now. So we did experiment with something that's maybe a little bit more lighter weight. And it's not really, I'm not sure. Oh, we, we thought of one that was maybe like less metaphorical and visual. This is like an existing component at that time internally in our design system. So we're like, maybe we can just explore something that's like a stepper to showcase that you have one or three or two or three fi files created. But 
very leaning more again. It's still pretty condensed and there's not really a lot of visual artifacts. But during your last free file, we were thinking, okay, maybe instead of just saying this moves away from being in an FYI to, okay, now we're going to tell you a little bit more about what you're getting if you do upgrade in this moment. And so beyond just like free files, we were thinking you can upsell open sessions and voting here as well and just have it take a little bit more up your screen. I love this one. Why did it not make it? I, I think it's quite large. <laughs> and there's just one thing we try to do in Fig Jam too is like really optimize everyone's workflows for smaller screens too. And this is like taking like more than half your screen. So we were thinking, at least on vertical height wise. So we were thinking maybe there's a way to be a little more conservative with how we're communicating this. Since one thing you do see after you do click upgrade now is an overall paywall that like tells you everything you are getting with a lot more depth. So we were saying, okay, maybe those types of information, if you do want to learn more and, and see a more comprehensive view, can be reserved after you do show more intent to upgrade. But gr great to hear your feedback, though. With it. That's definitely very appreciated, which is great. But yeah, we did explore it, is, is what I was saying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, overall, this was something that we did. So we explored two series of tooltips, one more focused on the visual page metaphor, and then another one just on the overall page plan value. So this is like the one for open sessions where like two visitors could potentially be, collab be collaborating. And this ended up being a very successful experiment. So at what point did you decide that, hey, when does it become too annoying? For example, when a user opens a fig jam, do they see this animation every single time do they, when they open a fig jam? Is it like every one hour? Like how did you figure out the sweet spot for not annoying them by showing it too many times? It was a, a very complicated series of fatiguing heuristics where we're making sure that if one very small edge case, for example, is if you have two Figma accounts, what happens if you see one in one file would, uh, and you switch accounts, would you see it in the other? So there was a very <laughs> complicated series of heuristics of when we would show one or not the other, especially if you're like already collaborating in the file or you have other like competing panels or modals open, let's say, how do we want to do it? Let's just say that People should not be seeing this for, I believe what it was, like more than once within a single week or something like that. There was like a specific delay that we don't bombard people for more than like within this what within a, a, a session, I think it was a week. And then one thing we also really tried to preserve is that if you were a new user, you wouldn't see this because if you're new, you wouldn't understand the value of Fig Jam anyways. You're still trying to like so like understand what this product can do for you. You're not at the point where potentially you're ripe for being upsold something when you're like, I just started. So we really wanted to preserve, for example, like the new user experience and all that. So we, we took a lot of these things into account. And I don't, not everyone sees this. Oh, so maybe for a new user, the delay or the timer is much longer than a week because they probably need more time to get acclimated to the benefits of Fig Jam. I don't have the table with me, but uh, my product manager, engineering team, and I worked really closely together on the overall thing. And I think the only other thing I would call out here that we've gotten really good feedback about from some users is the overall sort of copywriting and content strategy here, I think. So you can see Julia's copy riffs here. So Julia is the UX writer I, I worked with who wrote so much magic into these overall strings. And I think one intentional decision making that she made was to make sure that we were conveying hey, here's what you're missing out on in these plans. Can you give an example, like in one of the copyright, like that you think conveys like what you're missing out? I think this is like a, a really interesting one around vote on life's important question. It's not, we're not trying to say, hey, you know, you should just upgrade because you're, you get voting. It's more voting is important to lead meetings with more confidence. You know, that's a really important part of, especially for facilitation, when, you know, a lot of facilitators don't know that voting even exists, so they use stamps to do that. But with stamps, you don't like aggregate votes easily. You, you don't know who's voting on what, because if there's over 50 stamps, you have to hover over each one to see who the, the author and the attribution is related to. So it's just very complicated. So people who are running a lot of facilitation sessions, it's like voting is a very important thing. So we really try to lead with the cop who would be like, hey, FYI, this exists. It's really meant to help you build more confidence as you're facilitating, but we're, we're trying to couple a pretty strong value to a, to what you're seeing here in this moment. Why use humor? Vote on life's important question. To me, it's funny, it's humorous, but you could have also gone with vote on important questions. Just make it very businessy, right? This is just very much part and parcel to the overall tone of voice. A lot of the UX writing 
team leaders, writers on our UX writing team have done within Fig Jam. We have Schmidt who used to, or still does to an extent, work on a lot of the UX writing within Fig Jam. Like he's been able to just establish such a fun writing style. Like for example, if you've like ever found that one Easter egg within Fig Jam where if you change a font to something that font size to beyond something that we actually have preset. So instead of like, I think our largest one says like huge. And if you put in 300, it automatically changed to ginormous <laughs> as like the name of your, your font, font size. There's actually way more. Try, you should try inputting like three, three point font size and it, just see what, how it updates. There's, there's a lot of these smaller, more fun language choices that just really seeps into so much of how we use Fig Jam. I think that's part of the fun, right? The fun and delight. People always say skimorphism is like why Fig Jam feels so fun and delightful. But I think to the U.S. writer's credit, there's so much of the ecosystem of the language we use in Fig Jam that feels more approachable and lighthearted and casual. So I think Julia did a really great job just like encapsulating that into this overall. And the reason why I wanted to bring that up too is because we did run a series of experiments beyond just this one hypothesis. We had multiple other ones and it all as a principle carried through each one of the experiments. So potentially here, maybe it's like less distinct, but you'll, it's some of the other ones that we explored. Yeah, there were just like so many copy explorations. This brings me to the next question is, we saw the iteration that I liked that did not make it to the final round. So is there any iteration that you have not shown till now that you personally really like, but for some reason it did not make it to the final, like it didn't get shipped? That is such a good question. Or an interesting one that you thought was interesting. Okay, so this is the one. Oh, this is another version of the one that you liked. <laughs> yeah. It just took, took uh, a lot more vertigo. So the one that shipped, actually ended up being my favorite. But when this kind of experiment idea came about, our initial hunch was like, let's try to lean into our current component system as much as possible because we wanted to work pretty fast. We didn't want to create anything that's net new. And I think personally for me, I really wanted to push the overall, how do we want to get someone's attention in this moment in a way that feels I don't like throwing the, the, the like delightful word around too much because it can mean so many things, but in a way that just is like pleasing to the eye and informative. And I was willing to even do, we have so much, when we think about voting, when we think about open sessions, when we think about audio conversations, the UI for all those three things is very dynamic. Voting is very much like a live activity. Open sessions is visitors coming into your file, collaborating without signing up. Audio conversations is skip the meeting, just run the, the meeting on Fig Jam with through audio, right? So there was so much dyna dyna dynamicism and liveliness in those features that I'm like, we would be selling ourselves short if it was one, just an image or two, no image at all and just like text. So I tried to push the team to consider thinking about really leaning to something that's a little bit more bespoke. And I was like, literally, I will do it. <laughs> I was like, it'll take time off of my plate. Let me. Well, let's just think about the engineers and the PMs think about what the tooltips uh, could potentially like what the heuristics are for what it would show and how complicated it would be the action to build the actual tooltip. But like for the animation stuff, like, let me do that. I'll take that on my plate. <laughs> so I think what we ended up launching with ended up becoming my personal favorite. I think that obviously there are folks who wanted something that was maybe a little bit more leaning into the existing component systems we already had. But I, I really just wanted to think about ways to incorporate some of this metaphorical language. And the minute I think I shared an initial prototype of it in our Slack channel, everyone's like, yeah, let's do this. If this is not going to be too hard, let's do this. This feels right for Fig Jam. So I think that ended up being a really good piece of alignment. Hey folks, this is Jay. It means the world to me that you watch this video. Let me know in the comments what topics you want me to cover in the future and I will see you in the next deep dive.